Hi, it's Wednesday, the 25th of August, and I am continuing to read and wonder my way through Matthew's Gospel. And today we're at Matthew 21, and we're going to look at verses 23 through 27. Uh, if you recall, um, yesterday Jesus got mad at a fig tree. Um, well, okay, so Jesus went into Jerusalem um, went into the temple, kicked over tables, uh, then went to Bethany uh, for the night, uh, and then in the morning heads back to Jerusalem, that's where we were yesterday, uh, and was hungry. And the fig tree had no fruit, just leaves, and so Jesus cursed it. And we wondered about that. Uh, and now Jesus goes back to the temple. So you understand that his, his, his move to Bethany wasn't a retreat, he, he just needed a place to sleep. Um, so he's here about business. And so he was in the temple, knocked stuff over, went away, and now he's back. Um, and that's where we pick it up. So let's see what happens. Um, Matthew 21, 23 to 27. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priest and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? And Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. Well, if we say from heaven, he'll say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we're afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. There it is. Simple little exchange. Um, Jesus is wily, right? They challenge Jesus. Jesus answers back uh, by asking them a question that they can't answer. They, well, they're stuck. <laughs> it's just good rhetoric, a nice little argument there. Jesus wins. Um, but so what? Um, I don't know about you, but I've not found clever argument winning a lot of battles these days. Um, so what are we to make of this? What, what, what is the wonder in it? Um, so as I wonder about it, well, Jesus comes back to the temple. So I, as I sort of said in the preamble, um, it's clear to me that Jesus is here on, um, on a mission, as it were. Uh, he was there uh, one day, knocked over the tables, created a commotion, uh, came back the next day, and he's teaching. So there are people willing to, to learn from Jesus. Um, so that tells you a little bit about um, the public support for him. I mean, we hear all the time, the Jews were angry, the Jews were upset. Um, and, and, I, and I'm always repeating that we're talking about the authorities, um, not all Jewish people. Because look, there are some Jewish people here who are who are being taught by Jesus, um, so they're not having an issue with him. Uh, and even when I say the authorities, we're talking about Pharisees and scribes. Well, not all Pharisees uh, were against Jesus. Uh, we know the Nicodemus came to him. Joseph of Arimathea is a supporter. There are Pharisees that support Jesus, so it's not as cut and dry as it seems. Um, but there are some people in authority, and so yes, they're uh, they're engaging um, in a question, and it and it's not even a rude question. This is the kind of thing that you do in the temple. This is the kind of thing you do when you read scripture. You talk about it. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, well, okay. I'm going to believe, why should I believe you? Right? And that's essentially what they're saying. By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Now, I've often thought that, that what's being um, questioned here is Jesus' authority to teach um, because he's teaching, and so why are you, you know, what makes you a teacher? Um, but on the other hand, he also came in the day before and knocked over the tables and said, you've made my father's house a den of thieves, um, or robbers, or whatever the translation is, uh, a bad place. Um, are they questioning him about that? Um, I, I, I wonder. It, it shows to me anyway that... Um, that they're um, somewhat, I don't want to use the word, well, they're, they're civil. They're being quite civil. I would think if, 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 if I went into your church and knocked over all your tables um, and, and 
yelled that you were a bad church, uh, and I came back the next day, you would probably bar me from entry. Um, you might call the police. Um, the chief priests and elders, they have the capacity, they have the ability to arrest Jesus. They don't. He comes in and he's teaching. Um, so for me, the engagement is still quite interesting. Um, and, and, and so I don't think that it's fair to imagine all the Pharisees are out to get Jesus. Some of them have issues and they keep raising them. Um, we know that. Um, and, and there is going to be a, a definite split between um, followers of the way, Jesus' people, and the church. After Jesus is gone, I mean, <laughs> uh, Paul doesn't get thrown into prison by accident. Um, and, and people go to stir up trouble and all sorts of things happen. So there's a definite campaign here. But there, but here, early on, I think we're still trying to figure some things out. We have concerns about Jesus. We're not sure about Jesus. But we're asking very simply, um, by what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that question. I've had people ask me, actually, by what authority do you preach? Um, the first time someone asked me, it, uh, well, um, I have a collar, <laughs> which is a piece of plastic you could have stuck in your shirt. Um, it's interesting to wonder about that. By what authority do you and I do anything as people of faith? Uh, as a minister, by what authority do I do things? As people of faith, by what authority do we? When we call ourselves Christian, who gets to decide whether we're Christian or not? Because I'll be honest, there's a whole lot of people out there calling themselves Christian, and I don't think they have the slightest idea what Jesus is about. And, and I certainly don't want to be associated with them. I am by virtue of we both call ourselves Christians, uh, and so I have to manage that somehow. Um, but I, by what authority do you call yourself a Christian? I would love to, to ask that question from time to time. And it actually might be a useful question for us to ask each other, not in a, not, not, not as if, uh, not, not in a moment fueled by conflict, but just as a question. So why, why do you do those things that you do? When you talk about your, um, desire to be kind, when, when you, when you, uh, shelter refugees, by what authority do you do that? Why, why, why do you do that um, when you engage with, 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 with a stranger and offer them hospitality? By what authority do you do that? Is that a human thing? Is that a God thing? Is that a both thing? Is that your faith? Is that your religion? Um, I think it's actually an interesting question. Now, of course, I mean, there is some enmity between, between the Pharisees uh, and Jesus. Um, and Jesus plays a little game, but it's not... To me, it's not just a cunning Odysseus escaping here. Um, I mean, Jesus does ask them a question that they can't answer. But, but if you look at their dilemma, I think it's an interesting dilemma, right? I mean, if if we say John came from, uh, if we say from heaven, then the people are going to say, "Then why don't you believe him?" Because they didn't believe John the Baptist, did they? Um, and in fact, Herod. Um, Herod took his head. So, I mean, they, they should be outraged by that if they believe that Jesus, if they believe that John came from, from, from God. Um, but they aren't outraged. At least they don't seem to be. Um, so if from, you know, human, you know, so, so uh, if of human origin, then why not acknowledge that? But they know that the crowd doesn't see it that way. So if I'm a Pharisee and Jesus has asked me this and I've been part of this discussion, well, if we say this, I don't know. I am now wondering, well, wait a minute. If John is from God, then one, why didn't I listen to him? And two, why am I not outraged that Herod has put him to death? Why am I not screaming about that, 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 that God's messenger has been has been put to death why am i not screaming about that but if he's just from human origin well then then why don't i just tell the people that why am i afraid of them in all of that we recognize that we're not really listening to god at all are we if we were listening to god we would be doing something but we're doing 
nothing. We're afraid of the people. Is that the best way to lead people? To figure out what they would like uh, and just do it? Is that is that real leadership? Um, or is it to understand who the people are, understand what they need and speak truth to them? Um, yeah, I'm in the middle of a federal election uh, in, in, in Canada. Um, I don't know that anybody uh, in my lifetime has ever really um, been able to speak truth to the people without getting turfed out of office. We get very involved in telling people what they want to hear. And that's exactly to me what the Pharisees are doing here, which is therefore to me ineffective leadership. Um, and, and, and if I'm a Pharisee, I suddenly look around wondering about why do I do anything? All I'm really trying to do is, I guess, protect my position. Because if the people get upset with me, I might lose my power. It's all about hanging on to my power. If I was really listening to God, then I would be okay to let go of my power. Whether the people you know, took their support away from me uh, or, or, or whether God led me a place I hadn't been before. I've given that power over to God. Jesus has asked a great question. And if I'm a Pharisee, I am really rethinking a lot of stuff. And Jesus essentially says, until you're ready to, to deal with this, then you really can't figure out who I am in all of this. It's, you're, you're not prepared. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder if the question, uh, just more simply, points out um, points to the fact that the Pharisees, that the leaders of the temple, are not really engaged with what's going on in the world. Right? These are important questions. I mean, John the Baptist was just recently killed. Why aren't we talking about that at all? Um, what's going on? But we're not talking about that. So is that a moment for the Pharisees to realize we are increasingly irrelevant? Jesus is relevant. There are people coming to Jesus to be taught. People are listening to him. Crowds are gathering. And yet the temple leaders, some of them, are resisting that. They don't want to they don't want to know about it. They're not relevant. That's a question for us as well, I think. Um, for those of us who, who, who lead communities, faith communities, ministers, that kind of thing, um, are we relevant? Are we engaged with the world around us? Or have we sort of just put the walls up and hidden inside? Um, you know, is, a, is our church only a sanctuary? Um, can it not also be a depot, an outpost, uh, a kitchen? You know, um, that's a question we get to ask ourselves. But as people of faith, too, do we shut ourselves off from the world? I'm so tired of hearing those things that people say, so I've stopped listening to them. But if we stop listening to them, how will we know when they start saying something else? See, that's the problem. When we stop listening, we don't notice when the conversation has changed. So if you stopped listening in 1967, you're probably wondering why they're still going on about banning the bomb. But that's not what we're talking about now. You've missed that we have now changed the conversation. Now now we talk about the environment. Now we talk about um, truth, objective truth, subjective truth, real truth. Now we talk about things that we weren't talking about before. But unless you're engaged, you don't know that. I wonder if Jesus' questions, Jesus' question just doesn't just drive home to the Pharisees that they're not really listening to what people are talking about. Because people are talking about Jesus. And surely some people are talking about John the Baptist. I mean, he was just beheaded recently. Um, but no, Pharisees don't seem to be connecting to that. Hmm. I wonder. I think I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to spend a little time today wondering about, about my relevance, whether I am relevant. Am I listening to the world? Is my faith relevant? Do I actually let it out to engage with what's going on in the world? Do I actually, you know, take my faith with me as I wonder about, yes, about the climate, as I wonder about uh, the election that, that that's before me? Uh, I'm not saying I need to find someone who shares my faith so that I can vote for them, um, but how does my faith help me decide who I support, um, 
in, in an election or after the election. Um, is my faith relevant? Um, or is it just sort of hidden away? And I'm a little bit afraid if I take it out, I might lose it. You know, kind of like the Pharisees confronting the people. I don't know. I'm going to offer a prayer and see what happens for the rest of the day in my mind. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you. We thank you for, for answers. We thank you for your word. But God, we also thank you for questions and the silence that comes as we wonder. The silence that often invites another person to speak or another perspective to be considered as we engage with other voices and other perspectives we get a fuller sense of this glorious diversity that is you that is creation god let us never be afraid of the silence let us never be afraid of the questions let us never be afraid to learn we pray through the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now that's enough for me today, but I look forward to checking in with you tomorrow. Uh, until I do see you, God bless you. And it's not true because I said it. It's just always true. God sees you. God moves and loves through you. God bless you. See you tomorrow.